We are going to start with uh, opening yeah. remarks. Two minutes for each candidate. And we're going to take these in alphabetical order, and so we're going to begin with Frank Hager. <laughs> Ours is a grassroots, volunteer-driven campaign. No expensive political consultants. The Sierra Club has endorsed me again a seventh time. Political campaigns today are a microcosm of what's wrong with government. Candidates hire expensive consultants to craft their message and run their races. Once elected, soups rely on consultants to tell them what to do. With seven terms as Fairfax mayor, I had to rely on myself, volunteers, colleagues, and town staff to solve problems and make decisions. We have no money for expensive consultants. Trade deals are huge issues. As mayor and union official, I led local Democrats publicly opposed to NAFTA in the 1990s. Yesterday, Ford announced it was moving production of Ford C-Max hybrid and fusion to Mexico. 2,800 U.S. jobs lost. As an elected official and state delegate to the Democratic Party, I'm fighting to stop the Trans-Pacific Partnership that will offshore barrier jobs. As mayor, I offered Fairfax's living wage law. Today is $20.11. I have long supported a $15 hour minimum wage. The state of California has finally agreed, but it will take six years. Our low wage workers can't wait six years to make $15 an hour. Wages and affordable housing go hand in hand. Bryn must regain its standing as the environmental leader. The state refuses to end aquifer polluting fracking, which releases methane gas, a major cause of global warming. Two years ago, I asked the Bryn Sues to ban fracking. I'm a legislator. I'll offer the ordinance that will ban fracking in Bryn so we can join Mendocino, Santa Cruz, San Benito counties in banning fracking. We'll force the state to act. Every salmon coming through the Golden Gate headed for the Sacramento Salmon Key Bay Delta passes right under the bridge of the Santa Fe Bridge. Elect me. And let me and Brim won't stand down. We'll fight the governor's tunnels that would finish off the shit up salmon if not stuff. We need to reverse the supervisors of Google San Quentin Vision Plan. There are a lot of over 2,000 new units right here on San Quentin Peninsula. The local coastal plan before the supervisors is, is up and it will add one and a half square feet in developed in Western Maryland. Frank? Track right in Kenfield. Thank you. Sierra Club endorsement this past week. Uh, I just want to mention something that Frank did not mention, is that I actually got Sierra Club endorsement myself this week. And I'm very uh, grateful for that. Uh, I just want to say a, a, a couple of things about myself. I don't want to make a big speech, because we'll have opportunities to actually ask questions and interact with them here. Louder. Oh, I know. I'm terrible with microphones. Thank you. That's OK. I just wanted to say a little bit about myself because I think a lot of people in this room may not know me as well as I'd like them to. Um, so I want to say uh, one or two things about that. I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, uh, went, was educated in public schools, uh, was very fortunate to be able to go to Cornell University and get my undergraduate degree in philosophy and psychology, and then uh, graduate degrees in law and business administration, with an emphasis on public administration, which actually might be relevant to this. But I moved to Moran in 1986, and I've lived here for the last 30 years. I love this county. I've raised my kids here. Uh, I've educated them also in Moran County Public Schools. I am very concerned about the direction in this, with which this county is taking itself. Uh, we are succumbing to regional pressures, pressures for development and growth that have absolutely nothing to do with the environmental character of our community. That's why I got into this campaign. That's why I want to sustain this campaign. That's why I want to be your next supervisor for District 2 in Marin County. I really would appreciate the vote. Thank you so much. Okay, well, good evening. Uh, it has been an honor, and continues to be an honor, to represent the residents of District 2 as supervisor these past four years. Um, it's also a pleasure to be here tonight uh, in front of all you great Marin Downs in our own Marin Downs Central Park. So, thanks for having us. So, I am a lifelong Democrat. I also am a lifelong Marinite. I grew up here, I raised my three children here, and I'm personally and prof professionally invested in this great county and committed to its core values around open space and environmental protection. 
protections, children and family, and supporting healthy, vibrant communities. My work as supervisor has been informed by these values and by two decades of community work supporting our schools, advocating for equity in education, working on local causes that made our community stronger. In my first term as supervisor, I focused my energy and attention on pressing community issues, and I am proud to have made progress on many. I led the effort to permanently protect the beautiful Sky Ranch property above Fairfax and San Anselmo as public open space. I've helped to secure millions in grant funding for flood protection and wildfire prevention efforts. I've taken on local traffic, launching a yellow bus, a school bus pilot, and the College of Marin student, bus, uh, student Transit Pass Program. I'm also working on infrastructure projects, the Sir Francis Drake Corridor Improvement Project being one of them. And at the regional level, I've linked arms with Assemblyman Levine and others to hasten the opening of the Richmond San Rafael Bridge Third Lane, and I'm now focused on securing funding to make the really critical, necessary improvements on the approaches to that bridge at East Sir Francis Drake and Bellum and San Rafael. Last year, under my leadership, the county established its parks, its playgrounds, and its public facilities as glyphosate free. And I'm leading a broader county effort to reduce pesticide use throughout our community. Also on the public health front, I champion the adoption of the prescription, a county-wide prescription drug take-back program and much, much more. And I did not get the Sierra Club endorsement, but I'm very uh, pleased with these two did. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Questions as submitted by the members of the Central Committee. <coughs> Answers are one minute and done a decent job so far uh, respecting the timekeepers. I know you all had kind of set comments that maybe didn't quite get time right. On these answers, please keep it to one minute. We have a lot of candidates tonight. Um, a lot to discuss. Is that better? Thank you very much. Okay. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. All right, so the first question, we're going to continue in this order, but we're going to rotate who starts. So the, the first answer is going to come from Kevin Harrop. The question is, and I'll repeat it as others need it, the question is, the marine population aged over 60 is growing. A new set of needs will arise for this population. What problems do you anticipate, and how do you propose to address them? <laughs> well, uh, can everyone hear me? No. no. How about that? No. Better? Better? Better. 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 Thank you. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm really glad you opened that uh, open discussion with that question because that has been one of the primary focuses that I have had in the last several years that I've been on the Lawrenceburg City Planning Commission and on the Lawrenceburg City Council. We have a pressing need to readjust how we approach housing and community development in Orange County. Uh, we have had uh, influences from outside this community, regional influences, that have pressed us to take actions towards high density development that are inappropriate for the character of Marin County. Uh, and we've had that built into our Marin County housing element, which has been a real challenge. Uh, in Larkspur, we've tried, I've tried at least, to promote uh, alternative, innovative issues, innovative strategies to address exactly that issue through junior second units, through infill development. We have an opportunity to address that challenge in that capacity, and that's the way I would do it. Thank you. Turn on. Um, yes, a, a really excellent question and something um, that I have been working on in different ways, mostly through transportation. One of the biggest issues um, for our seniors is that they tend to become housebound, uh, either because they um, are uncomfortable about leaving their homes and driving out of the community, and or they just lose their connection to community as um, people age out and move out of the community or families not there. So one of the things we really have to work on, in addition to trying to provide some different housing options that allow people to move from their single family homes down closer into the community downtown, where they're more closer to people and socializing, is also transportation. How do we get people who are up in the hills uh, down to services, down to social events, so that we don't have folks housebound 
and disconnected from this community. So Marin Transit's working on some really innovative uh, transit programs, volunteer driver programs that actually send individuals up into the hills to connect people with the, the places they want to go. And then also on the mental health side, we have actually ambassadors that go out and provide mental health connections to our seniors. We're just going to do this. I, I don't think that's working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go, Frank. As mayor of Fairfax, we were faced with a 70 unit low income senior project and it got bogged down in a zoning issue. It couldn't be approved because of the zoning issues. I facilitated the approval and the construction of the better house, 70 units of low income senior housing. Currently Fairfax is addressing uh, a, a 54 unit senior citizen low income housing project. And I'm hoping that's gonna sail through the Fairfax Town Council like the Bennett House did when I was the mayor. I proposed a new on-demand app-driven transit system that would be small vans driven into the hills, into the neighborhoods to pick up folks, to get them to doctor's appointments, to shopping locations, to bus, to ferry, or to train stations. Uh, Marin Transit isn't working the way it's set up, and we, we need to come into the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, respecting the timekeepers. Let's set up and get Supervisor Wester going to start next. As Supervisor, what will you do in the next four years to ensure that real progress is made in implementing meaningful flood measures in the Ross Valley? All right, thank you. Of course, this is a big issue for me. The most important thing right now about the flood control in the Ross Valley is that we move forward with projects in a really inclusive way that brings the community along with not only the design and the decision making, but also at every step along the way. So I think that Phoenix Lake uh, is something that the community is interested in pursuing and we're getting that one launched and off the ground. We just started a, um, a community participatory process on the Army Corps project in Kentfield in Ross where we'll have field trips out to the creek as well as the, the required um, environmental review program. But the lesson learned from Memorial Park is you cannot, you cannot force a project on a community unless they've been part of the design and part of the decision making and actually are supportive of the project in the end. It's just a fruitless effort. No, no, no. Frank. Frank. Oh, Frank. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> The county has spent $8 million on consultants trying to solve the flooding issues in the Ross Valley. The consultants have no clue. Their, their plans are wrong-headed. There, there's no institutional knowledge of how Fairfax and San Anselmo and Ross and Kenfield flood. They've made huge mistakes. A number of us attended the county flood zone meetings. We went to San Anselmo Town Council meetings. We said, don't destroy our kids' playgrounds. Don't dig up Memorial Park. Don't dig up Lefty Gomez Field. Those won't work. We want real green solutions. When they refused to listen to us, I helped Santa Summer folks draft an initiative, took it to ballot. We're going to do the same thing in Fairfax to protect Lefty Gomez Field. There will not be a detention basin at Lefty Gomez Field. I'm working with moms and dads up there. There are greener solutions. We need to clean the creeks. We need, we need cisterns. Uh, we, we need rainwater catchment. We need uh, to raise some structures that are in the floodplain. There's, there's a lot of number of ways to do it. Thanks, Frank. Um, I actually, uh, this is a really terrific question because uh, I saw the IJ today. And in the uh, front, front line, or the front page story for the IJ was basically uh, Supervisor Rice, Rice abandoning Lefty Gomez, which is um, I've been to all of these meetings, and I've actually seen the discussion about the detention basins. The detention basins are a bad idea. They are basically oriented towards reconstructing recreational values, not to enhance flood control within our community. We need to be able to, we need to develop, which I am in the process of doing, uh, creative solutions to take water out of the system and to the extent that water cannot be in the system, cannot be in the system, to move it out. The process that we've been engaging in through the flood control program has been a disaster. 
uh, the Corps of Engineers program has been inappropriate, and I am absolutely opposed to the way in which this process has right. been conducted. Thank you. Okay, for the, the uh, Corps of Engineers, the next question is first goes to Frank. What is your opinion of San Antonio's community facilities master plan? As supervisor, what would you do to support the cities within District 2 to maintain and upgrade facilities to meet the needs of current and future populations, including San Anselmo's community facilities master plan? You know what's interesting, when the county was working on its housing element, uh, they, they selected sites within cities and towns sphere of influence for high density housing. They had no business going into a planning sphere of influence of one of our cities to make determinations as to what kind of what, what kind of housing should be there, how many units. Now, if the county wants to help San Anselmo, I'll, 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 I'll be there with them. But the fact is, San Anselmo has a, as a mayor and, a, and four council members to make those decisions. If they ask for help, I'll be there for them. But I'm not going to jump in the middle of whatever they're doing and try to tell them how to do it, when, when to do it, and where to do it. Uh, that's going to be up to them. And, I, and if elected, I'll do everything I can to assist them. Yes. Uh, uh, once again, thank you for asking that question. Uh, I have to answer that question from my perspective as a current city council member in the city of Larkspur uh, and currently the vice mayor. Uh, we've gone through a process within Lawrenceburg to reevaluate our housing element, and I'm actually grateful to see some city council members from Lawrenceburg here in the room tonight. Uh, appreciate that support. Uh, we are working on, I think, uh, innovative strategies, as I just mentioned, to really focus on the reconfiguration of our housing element in a way that takes us into the 21st century and that respects the communities that actually exist within our jurisdictions. Uh, I think that's, I have to actually agree with Frank, it's, it's really important for us to take advantage of the opportunities that we have as local municipalities to focus on the authorities that we have to make sure that our communities are well, are well respected in that context. Uh, and I am completely in support of that, and I'm told to stop. So I want to the San Anselmo Community Facilities um, process was an excellent one that started out at the ground level and involved the community members in going through their facilities, particularly at the uh, Memorial Park and the Isabel Cook Center. I knew they were entering into this process, and, and so I asked them that they actually include the Marine Housing Authority in that conversation because there's some really important affordable housing on the same footprint there. And they went through a design process with the community that looked at, at they created a master plan that not only made for improvements and, and the potential for actually increasing the number of affordable housing units there at Memorial Park, but also a much better use of the facility and the space in general. I think there's a real um, important role the county can play and the county supervisor can play in supporting projects like this that are supported again by the community and have a broader community benefit than just actually the folks that are living in the town. Memorial Park is used by uh, children and families from the Ralph Ross Valley, and uh, when they're ready to move forward, I'm going to be ready to support them uh, 100%. Thank you. Maybe the uh, fourth and, and final question, uh, Councilmember Carroll, you will start. Okay. The question is. How would you address the affordable housing issues in the second district? And more specifically, would you support rent control or some alternative plan to control skyrocketing rents? You know, uh, it's it's been uh, rent controls have been an issue that has come up uh, repeatedly for me as I've walked around the neighborhoods in the city of Lawrenceburg. Uh, we have uh, probably as much, if not more in the city of uh, uh, our neighbors who are in uh, rented apartments. Um, I have always been concerned about rent control as an economic concept, <coughs> but I think it's important for us to remain open to that um, as a strategy that could be built into a range of strategies that would help support uh, folks that live in our neighborhoods. But I actually think it's much, it's much more important for us to be focused on uh, strategies that will build housing that are affordable for 
people who want to live in our community, who support the people who live in our community already. Um, so I think a range of strategies is what we need to do, and that's what I support. So the Ross Valley is really pretty much built out. We have very few opportunities to create new housing. So um, I, I, in, under my leadership, the Board of Supervisors conducted a series of workshops last year in which we kind of took um, a realistic look of what are we able, I mean, what does the community need, what are we really going to be successful at, and how are we going to get there with regards to preserving a mix of housing in this community so that all range, income range levels of folks can, can stay here. So what we landed on was a strategy of acquisition, preservation, conversion, identifying housing that's out there that's currently affordable, though, though that may not be deed restricted, and finding partners to try to acquire it and then to deed restrict. We need to work within the existing built environment to provide the, con the housing mix that every community needs. And through, set through acquisition, preservation, and conversion, through the development of second junior second units and second units, we might be able to start to make inroads, but certainly we need to prevent further loss and we need to focus on what we can realistically do. All right. Fairfax is one of the most affordable communities in Marin. And it's that way because of what we did. I wrote, I drafted and wrote an ordinance that was challenged all the way to the Supreme Court here in California. And we were upheld. A town, an incorporated city, General Wall City, I might have, has the authority to protect affordable housing by whatever means they feel very, it is important to do. So Fairfax banned the condo conversions of all apartments in Fairfax. We've never lost one apartment with yeah. the complex to, to, uh, to condo conversion. So new, develop, new development, I'm demanding 50% inclusionary for, for affordable units. If you want to build uh, higher density in, uh, higher density housing in Marin, you need to have 50% affordable, not the 10% that, that they try to give us. Rent control, I'm a no one rent control. Uh, rent control is not the answer. San Francisco has tough rent control laws, but it, it exempts properties that were built after 90, 1995, and, and it doesn't work. Well, thank you all very much, and thank you for the answers, and thank you for Getting the pattern down and, and respecting the time keepers. We are now down to the time for a one minute closing statement from each of you. And the first one on the closing statement will be Supervisor Hall. Oh, yeah. No. Start timing me. I didn't. <laughs> okay. So I'm running for uh, re election into this seat because um, I love this job, which is hard to believe, but I really do. I love working with the people in this community. Also, there's so much more work to do. We haven't talked about homelessness. We've got a real problem in San Rafael, and it's about making sure that people who are on the street get into the services they need, and making sure that people who aren't interested in, in services and are on the streets and move on out of town. We need to work on affordable housing and preserving this mix of housing that we were just talking about. Our housing, our communities are starting to strangle themselves because we're not able to support Told the people in town that we need to provide vital services and to be there for us. Um, we need to continue our vigilance around environmental protections and, and we need to work on climate change. Much work to do. Um, I think I'm the person to do it. I have a track record of success. I have relationships throughout this district and this county with leaders, community leaders, electeds, uh, and residents. I've earned right. their trust and respect. And if you check out my endorsement list, so thanks Frank. for having us here tonight. Frank, you should ask. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. Here you go, Frank. As candidates, we've had at least a dozen questionnaires to answer. One common question is, how much money will your campaign raise? We want to know if your campaign is viable. I've never raised tons of money for any campaign. We've always run grassroots, volunteer-based campaigns. I will run the second district office like we are running our campaign, from the bottom up, not the top down. Speaking as California's first Proposition 20 Coastal Commissioner, I would love to replace Supervisor Kinsey when he steps down from the Coastal Commission. And I'd like to once again represent Marin. 
The county must take responsibility for dealing with homeless issues. They can't let Santa Fe bear the brunt. Santa Fe businesses and neighborhoods need relief. More nurses. In addition to Sierra Club, the California Nurses Association, former state senator Doreen Evans, Marty Griffin, the author of Saving the Bridge to the Coast, Ross Valley Sanitary District Attorney of Pam Maggs, Ginger Sue's Mason President, Pesticide Risa, Dr. Dan, Marty, Dan. Fairfax Council Mr. Barbara Kohler, and Peter Lynch. Santa Sola County, Santa Sola Mayor's Fort Greene. Well, that was good. Um, <laughs> What, what, is my, what is my time start? Uh, I, I, again, I want to congratulate Frank for getting for the umpteenth time the Sierra Club's endorsement, but I actually am very proud of the fact that I received the Sierra Club's endorsement for the very first time in this election. And I have to say that I reflected on that over the last day or so, and I appreciate the acknowledgement that uh, Mr. Egger has gotten for all of the work that he has done over many, many years to support the environment in Marin County and throughout the state of California. But I, I view the endorsement that I received from the Sierra Club this week as forward-looking, as an endorsement of myself to take the values that I have as an environmental lawyer for many, many years and move forward to protect the environment of this most beautiful county in the country and protect it, to preserve it, and to promote it as the innovative, assertive place that really is. I am so proud to be here tonight, and I really appreciate the opportunity for you to listen. Right. Thank you. Thank you all. Let's give all these guys a We're now going to start with the candidates for the third district. We have two candidates. We have Supervisor Kate Sears, and what challenger is in first? And we'll just, this, you guys might have a little bit easier time than the folks who went before you, and definitely an easier time than the groups, the next oh, group. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna be bouncing back and forth between you, but we are gonna go in alphabetical order. Same rules apply, two minutes open, four questions with a one minute answer, and a one minute close for each of you. Blue means 15 seconds. Red really does mean stop. And as I just pointed out, a lot of you remember, speaking faster does not get you more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to begin with the third district. We're going to start with opening, and first we'll meet Susan Kirk. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm really pleased to have the DCM sponsor this debate. I've been a member of the Democratic Central Committee since 2010, and I've been a lifetime Democrat and really proud of the Democratic tradition of being of service to the greatest number of people. And I'm reminded of the quote that we all love from Kennedy of the ask not what the country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, and want to see how we continue to celebrate that idea. At the national level, it's embarrassing to see the way there is a sinking into mean-spirited and accusations. And I want to say I'm committed in this county, at the local level, to be operating, focusing on the issues. What I bring to this race, I've been involved in grassroots leadership since getting started with Friends of Mill Valley back in 27. Dick Spotswood recommended at the Friends of Mill Valley model as something that would be relevant for the entire county for looking at how to bring together neighborhood and community groups to strengthen their education and their engagement and their empowerment to be able to hold on to local control in their communities. From that, I've moved to the Marin Coalition and more recently in 2016 have been invited to run for the Board of Supervisors with people saying, it's time for a change. So I'm very happy to be here to say that working together, as I have a history of doing with many, many groups, we can work together and tackle those difficult problems of housing and of transportation and of pensions and of pesticide and the whole range of them. We can strengthen how we stand up against the regional influences of a lot of power and a lot of money for agencies with alphabet names operating out of sight and without our vote. So it's an honor to be running for the Democratic position. 
I Aye. bring transparency, fiscal accountability, Aye. and citizen engagement to this role. Aye. So I've been a lifelong Democrat, although I'd like to say I was raised in a mixed household. My mother was a Democrat and very active in local politics, and my father was a Republican and very active in environmental preservation. So I got good values on both sides of the family tree. So my family moved to Mill Valley in 1955 and then Sausalito in 1965. I went to Marine Country Day School in Tampa. I really am a daughter of this community and I understand our values. I was a lawyer for 22 years. The last six of those years I was with the California Attorney General's office and I'm proud to say that I was the lead lawyer in the first lawsuit filed against Countrywide for predatory land lending that resulted in an $8.6 billion nationwide settlement. And I bring that activism and that sets a compassion for people to my current job. I've been your supervisor for almost five years now and I've really been busy. I've been doing a lot, working hard to address traffic issues in Tam Valley and in Muir Woods. I've been collaborating with Mill Valley on improving and trying to reduce our traffic congestion at East Blythdale 101 Tiburon Boulevard uh, overpassing and to launch and preserve yellow school bus programs that really are going to make a difference in our traffic situation. I chair MCE Clean Energy and we have done a fantastic job. We now have over 170,000 customers. We are building local renewable energy pro projects right here in Marin County. And we have energy efficiency programs that are helping all of us reduce our, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. I've been a leader in the county on addressing sea level rise, educating people, and really trying to figure out what we are going to do to address our future and how we're going to collaborate the county, the cities, and the towns to do a countywide sea level rise vulnerability assessment and figure out how we're going to work together to prepare ourselves. I worked with my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors to accelerate $84 million in payments to pay down our retiree uh, pension and retiree health liabilities. We're making, we're taking that seriously and we're moving forward. And then I'll tell you about the Aging Action Initiative later. <laughs> okay, thank you both. A little more attention to the time. I, I was looking okay. that way. <laughs> First question will start the supervisor Sears. The marine population aged over 60 is growing. A new set of needs. The marine population aged over 60 is growing. A new set of needs will arise for this population. What problems do you anticipate and how do you propose to address them? Thank you. So I'm our board liaison with the Countywide Aging Action Initiative that brings together a phenomenal group of nonprofits and service providers to really address how we deal with our aging population going forward. I, all of us, I'm certainly over 60, and I think we, many of us have different views about what aging means. We want to preserve our safety net services for the, truly, the folks who truly are most vulnerable. We want to address folks who are isolated in their home by improved transportation, and also home delivery of food. We're working on that to have a van that delivers food. But I think we also need to think outside the box a little bit. We have parks for kids, let's have parks for seniors. Many of us are very active in, as we age and we need to make sure that we're taking care of all of our needs. Housing is an important issue for folks who are house rich and cash poor. We're looking at second units and how do we get room for folks to live and use that existing housing infrastructure effectively so our seniors have people who can live with them to take care of them and make sure that they're not isolated. We have a variety of services. Well, this is a really important item. You know, my own silver hair tells you that I'm looking at that issue as well as many of you in this room. So I think the issues around housing and transportation are really a part of how we all need to keep working together to be identifying those solutions that give us the greatest number of options. So the same kinds of transportation needs that we all face right now, being able to be able to get where we want to go with flexibility and with speed, with reliability is important, whether that happens with a bus or a ferry or with a ride share or with someone who's going to come and pick us up or with shared carpooling to various kinds of places. In housing, in housing, a similar kind of thing is true, I think, in the, tr in the ways in which 
We grow up in families, so most of us already know something of shared housing, and we continue to work towards the shared housing, whether it's in individual homes or in retirement centers or in shared housing in neighborhoods. Thank you, Susan, and you will start with the next question, and that is, the commuter traffic at Tam Junction has vastly improved, but the highway traffic is still gridlocked. What proposals do you think could help this situation? Well, the gridlock, we, we deal with gridlock everywhere, so thank you for asking, especially about that area. You know, anybody driving over here today, we also, I experienced at least, the traffic congestion getting over here. So all of our roads are congested, and we need to find ways to, to reduce and mitigate the kind of congestion we have. I think first and foremost, what we need to do is stop building that's going to be adding to the congestion. Um, for example, in the third district, we're proposing, it comes up on Tuesday, to add 600 more car trips a day from Belvedere Place oh. in Strawberry Village that'll add to the congestion on Highway 131. So that's a big problem. Um, so in addition to that, no, but uh, we, we can restrike the roads, we can synchronize lighting, we can do some, some basic kinds of things that are proven and known to make a difference for transportation. Supervisor, before you start. I'm going to look at the timer. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I, I appreciate no. that. And that was not my comment. I was afraid of that. My, my comment is actually to the audience. One of the ground rules that we did not share with you is that we take all of these candidates deserve your applause for <laughs> stepping into the ring and advocating for their point of view. And you can applaud especially hard at the end for the one you think did the best job. But please don't applaud during the debate as candidates are asking questions. We have a lengthy list of candidates to get through and it just slows everything down. So and they only please, have no minute. spontaneous applause. And they only have a minute and someone's not going to hear if you start applying, because we're going to stick to the time. So, <laughs> Supervisor, your time's about to start. Do I need to repeat the question? <laughs> the question is, commuter traffic at Tam Junction has vastly improved, but the highway traffic is still gridlocked. Which proposals do you think could help this situation? Thank you very much. Well, obviously, we need to get that third lane on the Richmond Bridge opened and open fast. There also has been discussion at the Transportation Authority of Marin about possibly building a, another connector from Highway 1 to 580 to alleviate some of the traffic. Profoundly, a lot of the traffic that we have is related to the fact that people cannot afford to live in this county, and people who work in San Francisco cannot afford to live in San Francisco. They're living in the East Bay, and they're using us as a drive through We can't stop that, but that's about 12% of the folks who are clogging our, our roads. We need to figure out ways to find housing or better public transit solutions for many of the folks who work in our county. I'm on the SMART board. That SMART train is beginning service at the end of 2016. We, we often forget about the number of people who are commuting between Marin and Sonoma. Taking folks off, out of their cars, putting them onto the SMART train will help with that congestion. We also need to really enhance our public transit. We're working on that through Marin Transit and Gold Gate Bridge and the ferries, but there's more that we can do in and in improving Time. our affordable housing. Okay. Supervisor, we're going to start with you this time. This is a lengthy question, so don't time me. <laughs> but, 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 but listen, yeah, no, it, it's, it's not that long, but it's long. Okay, in San Francisco, there are mixed-use developments where residential units are built on top of commercial developments to alleviate traffic. The late supervisor, Charles McGlatt, was working on these types of developments before his untimely death. Do you think this is a good idea for Marin County and particularly Southern Marin? And if so, how would you advance this concept? Thank you, I do. In fact, I, I live in Sausalito, and if you go on our downtown, we have exactly that kind of mixed-use development that was built probably 60, 70 years ago, where you have shops on the ground floor and apartments above. I think that we have a number of commercial areas, shopping centers in our county, where we could add in a modest amount of housing on the second floor. 
When the Strawberry Shopping Center was renovated a number of years ago before I got in office, there were four or five housing units, not a lot, and perhaps not enough, but there were, there were some housing units that were put on the second story of that shopping center. I think probably most of us don't even know where they are. We have space that we could use in a way that would fit in with the character of our community and, and not add unduly to our burdens of traffic and also allow people to live here. So I think it's something that's important to proceed with. I had this conversation with the owners of the shopping center in uh, Marin City about whether they had the option of potentially putting housing in there. And there are many restrictions in shopping centers that are challenging, but I think it's something we need to look at. Um, I think we need to look at all of the options, so that should be one of the options that we have to look at. I also want to address this, this question in terms of what's happening in the third district, and that is that we have some movement underfoot so that there is the potential that we will actually be losing 500 units of affordable housing in the third district. And let me just explain that briefly, and it's all, this is still a bit of potential. Marin City, Golden Gate Village has been allowed to fall into disrepair. Some people fear that, fear that that's going to lead to saying it's too far gone, we have to tear it down and start over, and we will lose 300 units of our most affordable housing if that happens. Add to that that the Faskin Trust has purchased the Golden Gate Seminary property and proposes to tear down 219 units to replace them with 304 units of affordable housing. We must be really cautious about having 500 units of affordable housing totally destroyed in the third district. And Susan, you're going to start with the, uh, with the fourth question. And that is that the Golden Gate Bridge District wants to eliminate all commuter bus service from Tiburon to San Francisco. The questioner notes this is not their first attempt. Do you think this is a good idea? And what would you propose to do about it? Well, I think that's a dreadful idea. I think how do we go from saying we want to get more people off the road and then propose that we're going to take off the com commuter buses and eliminate buses? You know, the problem is that we have too many buses that are too big, so they don't have full, full occupancy. And what we actually need are more smaller buses that run with enough regularity that people who would like to use public transportation can know what the schedule is and count on the buses showing up on time instead of drivers who are not showing up for work and therefore be able to use more of the bus service that will actually give all of us some relief from the traffic congestion that we have on the road. So that's my answer. So the Golden Gate Bridge District staff suggested removing the Route 8 uh, to Tiburon, which is the one bus that goes down, the large-scale bus, and also a shuttle bus that serves that peninsula, which is what the residents wanted. The staff re re recommended re stopping, removing Route 8 because there wasn't sufficient ridership. I persuaded the Golden Gate Bridge District Board not to do that and to, for six months to do a very careful ridership count to see exactly how many people are riding that bus, because many people in the community we heard from who ride the bus, they want to keep it. They believe, in fact, the ridership is higher than some of the earlier accounts were showing. So I am hopeful that that bus will remain on the road. It's absolutely the case we don't want to take away public transit. I'm hopeful the Golden Gate Bridge just will leave that bus on while they are also taking over ferry service, commuter ferry service to Tiburon, so there will be a lot of public transit uh, service for that community. All right, thank you all. Thank you both very much for thoughtful answers to those questions. We now come to the closing remarks. Supervisor, we will begin with you with one minute closing remarks. Okay, thank you very much. So, as we know, there are significant issues facing this county. Some of them we've talked about, infrastructure and traffic, climate change, our affordability crisis. And I just want to make sure it's clear so what you heard about the potential for removing 500 affordable units in Southern Marin is absolutely not the case. I have the experience, the skills, and the track record to tackle all of these challenging issues and to get things done. To be effective, you need to have an open mind and you need to listen to everyone, even if you don't agree with them and they don't support you. And then you need to make a, a decision. Just saying no does not get the job done. 
To make good decisions, we need to find common ground. We need to collaborate in new ways, and sometimes we even need to think outside the box. That's how I do the job as your supervisor, and I look forward to continuing to working together. And I hope you will check out my website, www.crsursupervisor.com, and support me in this election. And thank you for having this event. Okay, thank you. So, Marin, with Mount Tan as our glorious guardian backdrop, makes this a really incredible place for all of us to live. And we're a community of amazing, innovative, and creative people who care a great deal about what happens here. <laughs> and I share with you that sense of caring about the community. If elected to the Board of Supervisor, I will, as I've always done, work collaboratively with stakeholders and constituents and other kinds of groups. We'll face the challenges of housing, pension, traffic, and all the other issues, and I'll work especially hard to strengthen the voice of the people in unincorporated areas. I've got the endorsement of, C of the Citizens for Sustainable Pension Plans, and I want to call out one uh, idea. It's been said, behold the turtle. She only makes progress when she sticks her neck out. I'm sticking my neck out in this race to be the, board of, the next Board of Supervisor, for District 3, and I ask for your endorsement, and I ask for your vote. All right, so we are now going to hear from the candidates for the 4th Supervisorial District. Uh, for those of you that, that have not followed this, unlike the other two, there is no incumbent running for re-election. So these are all folks that will be new to the job of supervisor if they are successful. And uh, it's a crowded field. We have several of them here tonight, and we'll do our best to uh, work through this in an expeditious fashion. First, with a two-minute opening, we're going to hear from Al Duke. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. Um, I want you to please take a look at my website, Al Dugan for supervisor.org and look at my qualifications. I'm running because we, Marin has a critical issues ahead of it. My campaign slogan is time for change. We have to fight intolerable traffic and excess development. That's the key issue heading forward for Marin at this point. Now I've worked extensively on the housing issue and I have a plan to make sure that Marin County gets reasonable housing. Fiscal sustainability. I have a strong financial background and analytical skills. Check my, res check my resume on my website. We have a $638 million pension unfunded liability right now. We have got to fix that and we've got to make it work moving forward. We also have a budget deficit predicted in 2018-2019. And then finally, the major issue is we need engagement in Marin County. We, there's too much backroom deals, special interests, and in not engaging the public. Too many projects, like the flood basin projects, start completely planned, and then they come to the citizens and everybody goes, what are you doing? So we've had that happen in Nevada with a bus station that 106 bus drivers said it's unsafe, but they're continuing to build it. So it is time for public engagement. I'm going to hold town halls and I'm going to make sure I am engaged with the people of Marin. Thank you. Thank you. No. Because we are going in alphabetical order by the candidate's name. So on behalf of Alex Easton Brown. No, 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 Easton. No. I went Easton. Okay. E. So, um, we're going to hear from Regina Carey on behalf of Alex Easton Brown. Dick Spotswood calls Alex and only in Marin combination of progressive and tax watchdog. Alex served as the treasurer of the Marin Democratic Central Committee in 2000 
and after two years as Muta's treasurer, he was elected president in 2012. Alex insists that we need a culture change at Civic Center so that the regional agencies, the developers, and the consultants no longer call the shots. He believes that we need to dismantle the MTC rather than let them squander any more of our bridge tolls and tax dollars. We are not Roner Park, we are not Pleasanton or San Ramon. Those one size fit all housing mandates won't work here. He believes the supervisors waste millions on consultants, yet our roads still go unpaved. We need a cap on the pensionable pay, pensionable pay for county employees. Pensions should be a safety net like Social Security, not a windfall like winning the lottery. He believes that Laura's law is absolutely essential because without it, we can't even begin to solve our homeless problem. We should no longer tolerate the filth and the used syringes on our sidewalks or in our parks. We have a right to a clean and non-threatening civic environment. Alex, as a parent, knows firsthand the grief and heartbreak of seeing his child on the streets, homeless, at risk because of drugs and alcohol. Yet without Laura's law, it is impossible to intercede. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Next we'll hear from Wendy Cowles. I've got my own time. Hi. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. I am a lifelong Democrat, and I have never missed a vote, and I am proud to have received the endorsement of the Nevada Democratic Club. Um, I'm an established local leader in transportation policy and environmental stewardship. And I must say, everyone has been talking about our traffic congestion. I am, some, I am the one candidate here who's actually done something about it. As the founder and program director of Safe Routes to Schools, I have collaborated with parents, neighbors, elected officials and staff at 58 different public and private schools in order to reduce traffic congestion. When I started 16 years ago, the schools and the cities were not talking to each other. As a matter of fact, the schools didn't think traffic was their problem, and nobody was listening to the parents. Now I have about a dozen committees where everyone sits down and works together for the safety of the children. We brought in over $30 million worth of safety improvement around the schools. But we did not even just improve it here in Marin. This program went statewide, it went national. There's one, there was $1.1 billion allocated to Safe Routes to Schools nationwide. I just returned today from Columbus, Ohio, where over 600 leaders across the nation from DOTs, health departments, Parents, school district, and regular volunteers were collaborating on how they can make the streets safer for children, health, healthier communities, and reduce traffic congestion. But I have not just done traffic congestion. I as I've also I've been a lifelong volunteer ever since my high school days in things like marching against the war, environmental stewardship, women's rights, and protecting our open space. And that is the leadership that I will bring as your supervisor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Dennis Rodoni. Sorry. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Dennis Rodoni. I reside in Olima with my wife of 37 years. Hold the mic up. I reside in Olima with my wife of 37 years, Judy. My grand great grandfather came to Olima in 1864, according to Dewey Livingston, the Marin historian operated there. I was raised in Point Reyes Station. I attended local <coughs> schools and graduated from Chico State University with honors in economics. For over the last 34 years, I've managed and owned Rodoni Construction Company in West Marin, uh, basically doing custom remodels. I'm happy to say I'm the only candidate in the 4th District endorsed by the Sierra Club. <laughs> For 21 years, I've been a board member of the North Marin Water District. I've worked on water issues in West Marin and Nevada. In addition to that, I've been on committee, committees and advisory boards advising the Sonoma County Water Agency on water issues in the North Bay and Marin County. I've been the special district representative on LAFCO, the Local Agency Formation Commission, which works with uh, cities and special districts on spheres of influence and annexations. For the past 35 years, I've worked to make my community a special place. 
That included a lot of nonprofit board work, ranging from the Coastal Health Alliance, where I helped bring coast, uh, health care for all in West Marin communities. I worked with West Marin Senior Services, and my task was to chair the committee for finding and funding assisted living facility in Point Reyes Station. The West Marin Seniors now own their own facility and provide assisted living care for eight individuals. I've chaired the Point Reyes National Seashore Association when they managed and contracted for the Jack and Meaning Wetlands uh, restoration. You have my personal commitment that as your supervisor, I will have an open and transparent government and office. I will be accessible all, all the time. time. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Ryan Stavey. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the invitation to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a third generation Californian. I was born in San Francisco and raised in Marin County. I grew up in San Anselmo and graduated from Sir Francis Drake High School in 1981. My mother was a community activist, introduced me to a number of political notables, and taught me a deep reverence for the natural world. I've spent my life fighting to protect every corner of our spectacular county, and it has truly been a joy. Defending the legacy of protecting the rural character and natural resources of our communities is a responsibility that I take very seriously. I've been a planner, builder, and designer for 30 years in Marin County. My areas of expertise are in the field of construction, our envelope efficiency, and sustainable design. As part of my career experience, I've become very familiar with all state and county codes as they pertain to building, planning, habitat, land management, waste and its treatment, and zoning. Since 1991, when my wife and I purchased our home in Woodacre, I've been staying abreast of all changes in the county, and in particular, development proposals and policy changes in and around West Miami. As the current chair of the San Geronimo Valley Planning Group, which is a local planning body, overseeing changes in our community since 1972, I've had the responsibility to familiarize myself with all planning and building proposals in the district. <clears throat> Whether it's road repair, new infrastructure, new codes, or a big development proposal, as chair, I have to know these proposals and policies inside and out. I've assisted developing our community plan, been involved in many large project master plans like Spirit Rock, and have become versed in all technical aspects of the regulatory and planning rules and requirements that govern nearly every change in our community. That's what the supervisor right. does. And next we'll hear from Mari Templeton. Thank you, Mary. Mary, okay. Mary Sorry. and I, and you calls me Mari, but that's okay. That's pretty. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me. I've also been a Democrat for many years. When I first registered to vote when I was 18, I registered as a Republican because one of my favorite uh, presidents was Abraham Lincoln. But as soon as I learned a little more about the modern day Republicans, I quickly switched over to the Democrats. <laughs> so um, I'd like to invite you to go visit my website, marytamburo.com, M A R I T A M B U R O.com, and read about how I got into local politics starting in 2010. I will not reiterate what I've said in previous uh, public forums because it's just repeating myself. But what I want to tell you is I'm very different from any of the other candidates, and I'm okay with that. I, I have never been uh, an elected official. I've been a singer for most of my adult life, a musician working with people, and I've also done a lot of writing, mostly just because I felt I needed to get something off my chest. So what I've developed over the years are the skills of listening and collaboration. And these are things that we need now more than ever in local government. Listening and collaboration. So what I would like to do is uh, just ask for your support and come to me with anything that is, is troubling you and what you would like to see change. I have my platform, various things on the website. I have ideas for creative ideas for housing. And one thing I really want to stress is I believe we need more arts and music in all of our public schools. 
and I'll work very hard to make sure that it happens because I know it can change lives. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We're now going to uh, start the rotation with, with Alex out. The questions will start with Wendy Cavage. And this first question is a test to see if you were paying attention <laughs> for the previous two districts. Try it along with me. The Marin population aged over 60 is growing. A new set of needs will arise for this population. What problems do you anticipate and how do you propose to address them? Thank you. I'm really glad that we get this question too because uh, I'm going to focus on West Marin, even though a lot of our population is spread out all over the county. But in West Marin in particular, we have some very special problems as far as our aging population is concerned. West Marin Senior Service is doing uh, a, a heroic job of trying to serve the seniors in West Marin, all the way from up in Dillon Beach, way, all the way down to Muir Beach. And the, the funding has been cut. The seniors are not being able to get the services they need. We don't have paratransit service in West Marin. And the funding is allocated based on population, and we don't have the population. And we need to change that. And one of the first things I want to do is change the, uh, the allocation of services to our seniors and to all of our health services in West Marin. And I hope there's a housing question, because uh, I want to get to that one, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. 75% of Marin are over 45, so we're all going to get there very soon. Aging in place is a priority and should be a priority for our county. Um, the city of Corte Madera is currently looking at policies, the aging in place policies, to make that work for them. The county needs to take up that task, too, to talk about aging in place. It's, it's so important. We're all getting there. Some of us are even there already. Um, so that's really important. The aspect that we look at second units and junior accessory units as options for all our senior services, senior, senior citizens, so that they can actually raise income from their house and stay in their house longer. Very important aspect. As Wendy said, I know the West Marin Senior Program very well. I was part of it. I helped them develop an assisted living facility in West Marin for six or eight people now. And what's important about that, it's one heck of a model for the rest of us to be looking at, because they do everything that we need to do in the rest of the county. Thank you very much. There's a great deal of concern by senior citizens to be able to stay in place, as Dennis had indicated. The services that are available are very limited. They'd like to have access both medicinal deliveries, they'd like to have food deliveries, they'd like to be able to get around. Many, in many cases, the bus services just simply don't provide the kind of access that's necessary, and there really isn't the kinds of services that most people that are in their later years need in order to be able to do what Dennis was just talking about, which is stay in their homes. It's the number one thing that we hear from from folks that are in past their retirement that really want to do. They don't want to be put into some kind of facility. They don't want to be, they don't want to be brushed off by the rest of their family. They want to be able to stay where they are and they want to be able to continue to be functional citizens. There's nothing more important than that. And I think that unfortunately right now, Marin County does not provide the services that are necessary. It would be one of my top priorities to make sure that those facilities are up and those services are available. Okay, now this is a big one. Marin Villages, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a really great program that's volunteer based. And what I would do as supervisor is see what we can do to uh, expand those services countywide. It's a really great program where people volunteer and they take people to their, um, take members to their doctor's appointments, they take them shopping, uh, they take them on, their, they have various social uh, outings, play backgammon, things like that. It's a really great service and it's, it operates on a hub, which means that it's just Marin villages and then there are, are these different villages popping up um, all over Marin. So let's just expand that because it's a really great idea. Well, this is an important question and I think one of the issues is definitely second units. 
Um, it allows the kids to start in the back and then the seniors to go back and let the kids have the house. So it's a common sense thing. But I think the best program I've seen for seniors is done by the Rotary Club in Nevada. And the reason it's so important is they build it and people from Nevada can go to that housing. Now when affordable housing is built with federal money, there's a lottery. And people from all over the area can get in. We had Warner Creek built in Nevada. It had 61 units. And after the lottery, only nine people from Nevada got into that facility. So we got to approach this in a common sense way and make sure we're really taking care of seniors in Marin County. Thank you. Okay, for the next question, we're going to start with Dennis Bernardi. And the question is, how would you propose to address the rise of companies like Airbnb and VRBO in places like Stinson Beach and Muir Beach? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, BRBOs, Airbnbs, and BNBs get confused way too often because the BNBs are people, work, people working in their community, providing a BNB, and that's their livelihood. So we be, need to be careful about who we're talking about here. The BRBOs and the Airbnbs certainly seem to be a problem. We don't have enough data to know what's going on with them, how many there are, what the problems are. So I propose the first thing we do is do some research and find out what's the issue, how many of them are there, and what's going on. Because they're taking affordable housing away from the West Marin community. However, we have a responsibility with the Coastal Act to provide visitor serving services. And that's a competing interest in many cases with affordable housing. Right now, in downtown Point Reyes, we're having a discussion with the county because the local coastal plan wants to have in the BCR zoning the commercial at the bottom floor of buildings and residential at the upper floor of buildings, which makes sense, except we don't have many of those buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're going to hear from Brian Stig. One important thing to note with regard to this issue is that right now the transient occupancy tax for Marin County is only 10%. That's frighteningly low. Uh, it's very important that we really look at the kind of impact that businesses and business models like Airbnb are having on our communities. I think it's much larger than what we might assume. Uh, I've known a number of people who have been personally impacted by the loss of their unit, their apartment, and that the owner basically converted and made quite a bit of money. So it's certainly a viable economic model, but the question is what kind of impact it has on our communities. I think the first thing we want to do is look at the transient, transient occupancy tax and possibly increase it substantially and use those funds to be able to effectively continue the county uh, in its acquisition of affordable uh, buildings. Uh, it's done an excellent job so far. It's, done, it's gotten 37 units in Point Reyes. It's got a number of units in Fairfax. And even in my home community, it acquired properties. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Mary. Okay, well, these are good ideas. Keep those coming. Let's all work together when this is all over. So, um, transit occupancy tax is a good idea. What I would like to see happen is a proactive uh, approach to this, where we have community housing trusts uh, get ahead of the game and buy properties as they come on market and reserve them for affordable housing so that they don't get uh, changed into uh, transient housing because when the more transient housing we have, our communities, the fiber of our communities are being destroyed. The, the children enrollment in schools is changing and, and that's just not a good thing. It's going from a, uh, an actual living, breathing community to a, a tourist uh, type economy and it's, it's a completely different feel. So it's definitely something that we have to be creative about. How do you? Well, I support bed breakfasts. They, they're businesses. They should be able to operate. I think with Airbnb, I think we have to monitor the situation. We have the tax that we can see what is actually coming in. And we have to find out what the overall impact is going to be. It's an issue. We have to study it. And we have to make sure we understand what kind of impact it is having all over Marin. 
I've been holding roundtable discussions with communities all over my district, and in West Marin, this is one of the number one issues, not only with the Airbnb, but also the fact that people are buying homes as second homes, and there, we have whole blocks, whole communities that are empty most of the time. There is a model in Santa Cruz, which I think is one we need to look at, in which they actually, where they, first of all, we have to have permits if you're going to do Airbnb, and second of all, we have to limit the number of permits. That is what Santa Cruz is doing. And that would allow some people to be able to make the extra income that they need, but it also will discourage people who are buying homes and emptying out units that they're, um, that they're renting out to full-time tenants for, um, for part-time tenants if they know that they can't get that permit. And I think, uh, uh, finally, I think we have to have incentives to have people keep full-time tenants in their second units so that they don't become part-time tenants. Okay, the next question, the first answer is going to come from Brian Staley. How would you address the affordable housing issues in the 4th District? Would you support rent control or some alternative plan to control skyrocketing rents? The supervisors and the staff of Marin County just finished a series of hearings that were asking that exact same question. The supervisors essentially unanimously decided that they were not going to do rent control. So as a single individual, um, I would not be able to change that momentum, but I do think it's something we need to look at. I think that rent control specifically and rent in general is absolutely out of control in Marin County. Um, my understanding is, and I was just talking with, the, uh, with a, the gentleman who oversees the Canal Alliance, he said in his district alone, or in his area alone, in the Canal of San Rafael, rent went up by 11% in one month. That is not a sustainable rate. It cannot be continued like that. We will be out of housing and everyone will be on the streets at that kind of rate. So yes, I think second units are an excellent option. I think there's a variety of other things that we need to look at, but I can't go into extreme detail because my time is limited. But. <laughs> yes, all our time is limited. Everything is temporary. <laughs> so, um, some of the things that I already stated, community housing trust, uh, I would look to the artworks downtown model in San Rafael. Uh, it's done a wonderful job buying building and every unit in it is affordable. Um, also, I do support the infill approach. And uh, I've asked the question about rent control and I'm, I'm open to continuing that conversation because I think it's really important that we're able to keep uh, housing affordable, especially for our workforce, so they don't all have to drive from Santa Rosa to come to work. Well, as far as affordable housing, I believe the requirement for a new development to have 20% affordable housing is the way to do it. But I think we have to use second units and generally promote smaller infill projects. And I think that's the best way to achieve the affordable housing goals. As far as rent control, you've got to be careful because if you control the rent, people won't build new buildings because the rent will be controlled. So I think we have to look at it, we have to study it, and we have to understand it, but we got to make sure we don't do more harm than good by using rent control. Thank you. So if you know state law, you know that um, no new buildings can be under rent control, so it doesn't actually inhibit new buildings. I think rent stabilization is something that needs to be explored. It's being explored in, in Oakland and in Santa Rosa. It needs to be fair to the landlords, but we need to be fair to the tenants. And as I agree, what's going on in the canal and in many parts of we're in is unsustainable. I think a very good idea that has come out of CLAM and West Marin is the idea of a land trust buying the land under a home and letting the people contain, continue with ownership of the home. People who are cash poor and house rich can use that infusion of cash either to go to a smaller unit, uh, change their, uh, their, you know, use it to upgrade their own home, pass it on to other people, but you have in perpetuity uh, preserve that unit in affordability because the land cost has been taken away and you now have control over it. I think that's something we need to explore. Thank you. 
Marin is a small county. We can't do things in big ways, and we continually prove that. In particular, West Marin needs to do things in incremental ways. Afford affordable housing can be addressed through second units. We need to revise the second unit policy and make it more affordable, though. Junior, section, uh, junior accessory units are good um, tools for all the areas of Marin County to use to rent a house out in your, in your rent a bedroom out in the house to, to someone to uh, develop income for you and also provide housing. There's no impact of that sort of thing to the community, and that's the best thing about it. Um, certainly, uh, the uh, things in West Marin that have worked well are the Bellinas Land Trust and CLAM. CLAM is currently looking at the postcard housing in West Marin to be all affordable. And it's a great program, and it's going to happen. Uh, Congressman Huffman is behind it, and legislation has already been passed to sell that to the county. Um, those kind of programs are things that we need to do, but we need to do it incrementally in small, small means. So. Okay, thank you. That brings us to our fourth and final question. Mary, we're going to start with you. And question is, if you get the microphone ready, do you support the county open space plans for Stafford Lake Park? And what do you think about possible expansion of Knox Airfield? consideration for Lake Stafford moving forward. As far as the airport, I haven't gotten deeply into that project. I know that there's people for it and people against it. I would like to see what they are saying and why they want to expand it and what, what will actually be the goal and what will be the result of expanding it. How will it help the people of Moran? So can I get a clarification? When you're saying the expansion of Stafford Lake, are you, are you no, saying? No, I'll, I'll, let, me, let, me, yeah. let me repeat the question. The question We're all is, dumbfounded. I know. <laughs> this is a, for those who aren't aware, this is a large, expansive district that covers many different parts of the county. This is a bit of curveball, but was submitted by a member of the party. Do you support the county open space plans for Stafford Lake Park? Part one. And what do you think about possible expansion of non-air fields? Okay. Can you just explain what the county plans are? Yeah, what is no, that? that's not how the question and answer works. They want to be supervised. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're supposed to know. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and of course, the, the, the expansion of Stafford Lake Park, uh, all I know about is that, uh, the skate uh, and the bicycle park that was put there. And I do support that. It is a place where um, mountain bikers have an opportunity to practice their sport that is not interfering with hikers. So it's the one place where mountain bikers actually can practice their sport with not, without the, the trail conflicts that are going in other parts of the open space. In general, I always uh, am looking for expansion of open space. I personally um, have worked on the acquisition of open space in my own community in San Geronimo Valley on two properties where we limited development to the point where we were able to acquire 1,900 acres of open space. And uh, as far as uh, NOS uh, Airport, I am not aware of the plans to expand it, but um, if, if I'm familiar with it, I think that they want to have commercial flights into NOS Field, and I'm not sure if I would support that. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'm not sure I'm expert at this question either, but I can tell you that everyone in Marin loves open space in parks, and expanding Stafford Park would probably be a good thing because people in Nevada would enjoy having more parkland there. As a director of the North Marin Water Board, though, I'd be particularly concerned that we're not expanding Stafford Lake. It's not going to happen because of environmental regulations. It's not going to happen. But I'm concerned about the water quality of 
Stafford Lake and any potential impacts of that because that water serves 25% of the water that we use in Nevada. So I'd be very concerned about that. About the airport expansion, I have heard about it, and I think we need to be really careful about the unintended consequences of doing anything, and we have to really understand that because sometimes even the best plan in the world ends up being the worst plan in the world. So we need to be careful about those kinds of things, and that's what I would say about the Knox Field at this point. Just maybe make sure we understand it, make sure we understand the unintended consequences of doing that project. Thank you. I'd like to second Dennis's point if your question about expanding uh, Stafford Lake had to do with the water holding, that it's simply not going to take place. The environmental uh, standards and the, uh, uh, regulations uh, won't allow that to take place. However, I have been out and I have seen the skate park and I have seen the infrastructure that was installed. It was done extremely well. And I know that people have really enjoyed uh, going out there and using those uh, that infrastructure and those facilities, and I've had a lot of positive feedback. So I want to applaud the individuals responsible for, for building that, and it, it's wonderful that it's off the beaten path, it's out of the way of other places, and it's not interfering with equestrians and hikers, which is really important to a lot of people. The other thing I would like to say really quick about the airport is that right now its infrastructure is not capable of being expanded, and it really is something that would require an enormous amount of effort, an enormous amount of investment in order for it to take place, and I don't see it being a viable option. Okay, thank you all very much. That one was a bit of a curveball, but asked by a member of the uh, committee that lives in your district and is concerned about these issues, so there's some legitimacy there. Uh, now we come to the close, and the first person we're going to hear from is on behalf of Alex Easton Brown. Once again, we're going to hear from Virginia Carey. One minute close. Thank you. Next week, as you sit down to pay your taxes, we hope that you will consider these questions. Do I want someone who will clean up the pension mess, do away with consultants, and be able to say no to developers? When Alex ran four years ago for assembly, the Pacific Sun endorsed him, calling him a straight talker with relevant experience who would be good for his district. The Chronicle called Alex an anti-politician iconoclast, which I thought was very funny, who thinks outside the box. The Bohemian said he was humble, honest, and, ex and says exactly what is on his mind, and that is true. As president of United Taxpayers, he has shown that he can work with difficult people, that he can work success successfully with both MAPE and CSPP, and bring them together with good results. Please. I have a proven, proven track record as an executive and a leader for the last 24 years. And I have a tremendous background in finance and analytical skills. The two critical issues I brought up, which is getting the housing right, because we're at a critical point, and fixing the pensions, which are a $638 million liability right now, are critical for this county moving forward. Those are by far the most critical issues we have. The making sure we get our housing up, allocation correct impacts every aspect of the quality of life in Marin. Traffic, water, schools, you name it. So I hope you will consider voting for me. Go to aldugan4supervisor.org. Thank you, Madam Wendy Cap. Yes, I am running to ensure that we maintain strong local representation for our district residents and concerns. I want to bring a balanced approach to the Board of Supervisors. We have done an incredible job in Marin County of protecting our environment, and we need to hold the line and continue that. We've also done a great job of building and protecting our agricultural heritage, and we need to fight to preserve that. But the real challenge of the 21st century is are we going to protect the integrity of our community? And that means our people. It is the people who, who fought to protect the environment. 
It is the people who run our ranches, and it is the people who do the work every day that makes Marin special. And we need to have a Marin that is available for people of all incomes. And I will work to do that. Please go to wendycallens.com and read about my issues. Please join in my campaign and volunteer. And that's Wendy with an I and Callens with a K. <laughs> and and the, lifelong, the lifelong Democrat in Sierra Club in Dorsey. I am deeply committed to serving our district and our county. Mm -hmm. My experience in local government and as an elected uh, office holder give me the necessary, necessary tools to start working day one. I understand how county, state, and federal government work, and I know how to make those entities work for the people of the 4th District and the county of Marin. If you care about West Marin as I do, and Marin also, join me on June 7th to vote for Rodoni. You can visit my website at Rodoni for Supervisor 2016 for more information. I'm all in for Marin. I hope you are too. Brian Stanley. I have the experience necessary after spending three decades as an advocate working to improve the health of our communities and addressing development pressures in Marin. With new county and state policies being drafted, which will bring unprecedented change to our neighborhoods, we need a county supervisor with real experience in policy and planning issues who will be a steadfast advocate for residents and the environment. As supervisor, I will bring my planning and green building experience to bear and make fundamental improvements in the way the county does business. I will work tirelessly to provide support for all the diverse communities in the 4th District of Marin County. Together we can make a difference. Please see my website at briansdavidforsupervisor.com and I would very much appreciate your vote. And Mary Temple. Okay, once again, thank you so much for inviting me here. And um, once again, I have the least amount of governmental experience, but I have quite a bit of diverse life experience. I was raised in uh, Section 8 housing in New Jersey. I spent my childhood there. The first time I came to Marin County in 1976, I was awestruck by the beauty of this county and never in my wildest dreams that I ever think I would end up living here. And if you had asked me five years ago if I ever would consider running for public office, especially supervisor, I would have thought you had gone completely crazy. Because, um, 15 seconds. Yeah. So anyway, what I was saying is I have a great love for this county. I have a great deal of compassion for people, and I care about what happens. I don't think we need any million dollar four block sidewalks anymore. Thank you all very much. How about a great day, Dan?